What is a manifold? This is a question all physics students have asked at one point. There are many different definitions of manifolds out there. Some are very intuitive, but lack mathematical rigor, and others are rigorous, but not intuitive. So, so, so to bridge this gap, today we'll be discussing manifolds in five levels of difficulty, from the elementary school level all the way up to the PhD level. Let's begin. So we can think of manifolds as a shape that looks flat when you zoom in. The Earth is an example of a manifold. The Earth is a sphere, but when you zoom into the Earth, everything looks flat. We can even pretend that the Earth is flat in very small regions, called local regions, when we do calculations. Another example of a manifold is a curve. Though a curve is not flat, when we zoom in, it looks up like a line. This allows us to pretend that a curve is a line in very small regions. This property is what allows us to invent calculus, which is, which is a useful branch of math. An obvious example of a manifold is a flat plane. Since a flat plane still looks flat when you zoom in. So a manifold is just a shape that looks flat when you get really close up to it. The first definition we gave gives us great intuition on manifolds, but doesn't capture completely what a mathematician means when they say manifold. When a mathematician talks about manifolds, they don't exactly mean a shape that geometrically looks flat when you zoom in, but rather a shape that is topologically flat when you zoom in. This is an important difference since there are some manifolds that don't look flat when you zoom in. So to understand this new definition, we, we need to learn what topology means. We see that two objects, A and B, have the same topology if we can stretch and squeeze A to get B. For example, we can, we can stretch a cube to get a ball by inflating the cube. This means that a cube and ball have the same topology. We can even stretch and, and squeeze our ball back into the cube. A ball and a cube clearly look different, but since we can tr transform one into the other by squeezing it and stretching, we say that they have the same topology. So a manifold is in a shape that has the topology of a plane when you zoom in. If you take a small region of a, man of a, man of a manifold, like a sphere, you can stretch and squeeze it into a plane. The first definition we gave is still great though. I mean, we can learn all of physics with using, with using just the first definition. So don't be discouraged from, from, from continuing to use it when doing physics. A manifold is a topological space where for each neighborhood, there exists a homeomorphism between the neighborhood and an open subset of Rn. We already covered the definitions of a topological space in a neighborhood in our topology series. So check those out if you're a bit rusty on the, defini on the, on the definitions. A neighborhood in the more sophisticated definition captures the zooming in part in the intuitive definition. The homomorphism part captures the same topology aspect. A homomorphism is just a continuous tra transformation with a continuous inverse. Continuous transformations map open sets to open sets. A sphere is still an, ex an example of a manifold since, since for each point on a sphere, there is a neighborhood that is homeomorphic to an, an open subset of Rn. A manifold is a locally Euclidean space that is second countable in Hausdorff. A second countable space is a topological space with a countable topological basis. We already made a video on Hausdorff spaces, but for a brief refresher, a Hausdorff space is a, is a space where two points have non-zero distance from each other. The extra conditions of being Hausdorff and second countable are innocuous in most cases, but in some cases it matters. There are many types of manifolds, like smooth manifolds, and analytic manifolds, and more. A smooth manifold is a manifold with a smooth structure, called the maximal atlas. A maximal atlas is an atlas on a manifold that is not contained in any other atlas. An atlas is a set of compatible C-infinity charts that cover a manifold. A chart is a manifold. A chart on a manifold is a neighborhood with a homeomorphism to Rn. A, com a compatible chart is a chart that is compatible to every chart on a manifold. 
These say two charts are mutually compatible if they love, e love each other very much. <laughs> Just kidding. Two charts A and B are mutually compatible if the homeomorphism that maps the intersection between the charts to f of a combined with the inverse homeomorphism combined with the, ho with the homeomorphism that maps the intersections to f of b is infinitely, is infinitely differentiable. So basically, by definition, a manifold will have a neighborhood for each point that is homeomorphic to an, an open subset of R n. We call the neighborhood with the relevant homeomorphism a chart. If the homo homeomorphism is infinitely differentiable, i.e. diffeomorphism, and the charts are compatible, we call that a smooth manifold. That was a lot to throw out on you guys, and I'd have to give it a full lecture on what I just said to do it justice. But this is a video meant to pique interest in the subject anyway, so maybe that might motiv motivate you guys to learn more about manifolds. We can now consider the category of manifolds called man p. The p refers to the smoothness class cp, which tells us how many times the homeomorphism can be differentiated. We can consider the functors that map morphisms from the category of manifolds to the morphisms of the category of whatever the functor maps to, and likewise for the objects. We can rethink a homeomorphism as an isomorphism in the category of topological spaces, and we can think of a diffeomorphism as an isomorphism in the category of smooth manifolds. Examples of functors that we can apply to the category of manifolds are a mapping to the category of sets and the category of rings. When we map one category to another, some of the structure of the domain is often left out, and the functor is called a forgetful functor. This begs the question, are fully faithful functors forgetful? Find out next in Abstract Nonsense. And that's manifold explained in five levels of difficulty. Further properties of manifolds can be talked about in contexts of algebraic geometry, algebraic topology, differential topology, differential geometry, and of course, category theory. Some prime examples are cohomology, sheaves, and holonomy. And for extra credit, one of the biggest applications of manifolds is in general relativity. General relativity cares more about the geometric, geometric aspects of manifolds rather than the, than the topological aspects. Space-time is a pseudo Riemannian manifold, meaning that the manifold is smooth and has a metric tensor that is an isomorphism. I'll talk more about what the metric tensor is and what an isomorphism is in my series on tensor calculus and my series on group theory, respectively. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you, you learned more about manifolds. Make sure to, to, to subscribe if you want more video, videos and to leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments if you want to see something more particular. Once again, till next time.